what is the media responsibility the, again um, also i'm talking about a responsibility of the journalist and also activists who are in the field when it comes to uh, development and uh, enhancing social values well the media should understand is a media persons uh, although the basic idea of a media person is to inform the society but same time there are social obligations of any person uh, we all are media persons also are citizens of this country and we are sri lankans first so as sri lankans we have certain obligations towards our society the uh, and we have to be professionally evaluating the issues before we uh, give information to the people if you see we, we have obligation towards the uh, society and uh, we have to project development studies uh, development uh, activities of the of a country you see whatever the things take in place to develop the society it could be uh, uh, intellectual development the social development or economic development and these areas i am afraid is not given due place in our media the most of our media is guilty of this uh, is it they ha they go for sensationalism and uh, our media is full of political issues is it the the politics takes i think 70 to 90% of the space and media time uh, whereas uh, development and other you know religious activities or the uh, educational activities which should get a prime uh, portion of the media uh, space Uh, is neglected ignored and you know, unfortunately they don't get uh, the uh, uh, space they that is due right mr senadir now i think we will move on to another section because uh, you have also been the former minister counsel in norway and then also france and then also india so uh, what can you uh, say about the foreign relations especially when it comes to norway norway's interest in peace making in sri lanka is it genuine or are there vested interests uh, well in any country uh, there should be a certain uh, interest especially as a powerful nations they uh, have vested interest norway's interest is not economical interest you see i do not buy the story that norway's prime idea is to uh, capture the, our oil reserves that i do not believe because norway is the fourth richest in uh, oil reserves and they, uh, they do not uh, uh, have long term interest in uh, Uh, oil reserves of the country of, uh, like sri lanka because we have limited oil reserves and that also to yield results out of this would take you know a few generations i suppose you know uh, to uh, excavation and uh, you know uh, exploitation of these reserves but norway has the vested interest in the sense norway is the richest country in the world and they are you see norway is a country uh, with the sufficient funds and without they feel that without a recognition in the world so they want to be identified in the world as the peacemaker of the world for that they that is their main vested interest in sri lanka so to achieve that objective they tried various you know the palestinian sudan philippines all over the globe they wanted to be the peacemaker but they failed they miserably failed in those areas and the finally they thought they had a, a semblance of a chance in sri lanka as the peacemaker so to achieve that objective of uh, you know success in peace making in sri lanka they took the side of uh, ltt because they felt in fact uh, mr eric solheim had told me once they felt that Uh, if their action is seen by the government of sri lanka as pro ltt they could always talk to a democratic country democratically elected uh, the word he used was a decent people of colombo he could talk to them and if there are any you know grievances they, uh, and uh, they could uh, solve them by discussions whereas th they said when the ltt uh, place their confidence in norway as a peacemaker but 
to get them to build that confidence, it took them years, various discussions with Anton Balasingham and the finally with uh, Prabhakaran. They had taken a long time series of discussions to build confidence. After they managed to get them out of the jungle to the negotiating table, they thought uh, unless uh, the confidence is maintained and if no, LTT has the fullest confidence in Norway, then only uh, this uh, mission could be successful. And whenever the LTT made a mistake, they did not want to take any punitive action or even reprimand the LTT for those uh, violations of ceasefire agreement because of the fear that they would break away from the talks and go back to the jungle to start the guerrilla warfare. So by doing that, you see they have uh, gone against the majority of the country and they have taken the side of the, the minorities or rather a group of terrorists who were trying, uh, in fact the LTT was trying to take the Norwegians for a ride, you know, they never had any intention of coming come to a negotiated settlement. They were using the negotiations for arms build up and various other objectives. Okay, Mr. Senadira, we will take a quick break and we will be back with you soon.